On World News Tonight, Al Gore's very public campaign to stay in the game. The speculation about recession, such a good economy for so long. The illegal trade in the prescription drug Ritalin. We'll take a closer look. And why have 65 million Americans gone to the birds? Because it's a treasure hunt. From ABC News World Headquarters in New York, this is World News Tonight with Peter Jennings. Good evening. Fair warning tonight about the election battle as television spectacle. In the next couple of days, in the company of police SWAT teams, more than a million ballots from Miami-Dade and Palm Beach counties in Florida will be driven in a convoy to the state capital, Tallahassee. And then the struggle between lawyers will begin again about whether they should be counted again by hand to see if it can be determined what voters intended to do on November the 7th. This is not the speed which the Gore campaign had hoped for, but as Aaron Hayes reports tonight from Tallahassee, the judge in this case, Aaron, has cut Mr. Gore only so much slack. Well, Peter, it really was another setback for the Gore campaign. They are unlikely to see ballots recounted anytime soon. Is it going to be a convoy? How, big, how, how many semis? Judge Saul signaled his willingness to give the Bush team what they want, a million ballots headed in a police convoy to Tallahassee. Just pack them up just the way they are. It is not what the vice president's attorneys wanted to hear. They only asked that about 14,000 ballots, the ones they felt gave them their best chance for picking up more votes, be recounted by the court. But by phone, Palm Beach and Dade counties told Judge Sauls if he said so, they would send every one of their million-plus ballots. Miami-Dade County is ready to do that, Your Honor. In Palm Beach County, Your Honor, it's actually a little bit easier for us to send them all. Pack them up and bring them up. For the Democrats, it was terrible news. Time is their worry, and the possibility that a million votes could be recounted, their nightmare. They just want their own to be tallied. It is these other ballots that is delaying things. And they've said that several times. And all I'm asking is that they send up our ballots as soon as they can. The judge said no, and no to a plea from Gore's attorneys to get the counting started. Sauls has not decided yet whether to count any of those ballots. That hearing starts on Saturday. The legal wrangling so far has just been over procedure. We still haven't been able to get to any evidence in this case. I've been trying to get us there, but we haven't gotten there yet. Worried attorneys asked to accompany the ballots. They can have a representative ride in the tail end, uh, the tail police car. <laughs> The pace of this legal battle has many wondering how it can be resolved by the December 12th deadline when Florida has to turn its votes in to the National Electoral College. Florida's Republican-controlled legislature is considering calling a special session to, in effect, choose the winners themselves in case the legal war does not end in time. The attorneys they hire encourage them to do it soon. It is your constitutional duty and my recommendation, uh, it's like the Boy Scouts, be prepared. It looks very likely a special session will be called, possibly by Tuesday. In the meantime, the Gore campaign has gone past Judge Sauls, asking Florida's Supreme Court to allow them to start counting their ballots immediately. Peter? Thanks very much, Aaron Hayes in Tallahassee. The Republican vice presidential nominee, Mr. Cheney, was very much the public face of his party today. He's been on television nearly as much as Mr. Gore. We'll get to Mr. Gore in a moment, but we're now going to go to ABC's Dean Reynolds, who has been covering the Bush campaign in Austin. Dean. Peter, the governor has been showing that what his aides have said about him for a long time is really true. He is a leader who likes to delegate authority. Deep in the heart of Central Texas today, the man who would be president stayed purposely out of sight. Indeed, for most of this week, Bush has had running mate Dick Cheney make the case for the legitimacy of their election. Good afternoon. Today, Cheney briefed the press on his role running the transition, his second news conference in 48 hours, announcing the location of their new privately funded office in the Washington suburbs and soliciting money to pay for it. We can send uh, contributions to the uh, Bush-Cheney Presidential Transition Foundation. Cheney, who literally bounced out of a medical checkup today a week after his mild heart attack, also said that he will pay a visit to Bush's ranch tomorrow in the company of former General Colin Powell. This will give us an opportunity uh, for an extended discussion of the transition between uh, General Powell, myself, and, and uh, Governor Bush. 
It also provides an opportunity to remind the public that Powell is Bush's all but certain Secretary of State. But relying on Cheney, Powell, and James Baker in the post-election period has led to suggestions that Bush is too dependent on his father's friends and associates. Today, Cheney said, yes, they have worked for President Bush. But a great many other administrations as well. So the notion that, uh, that uh, uh, somehow that makes us over-reliant, you might as well say we're over-reliant on the Ford administration. But Bush is not completely detached, Peter. Aides say he's been calling Republican congressional leaders this week, though he's yet to reach any of the Democratic counterparts for the very simple reason that they continue to work to get his opponent elected. Thanks very much, Dean Reynolds, in Austin tonight. Vice President Gore was in Washington all day, including time spent with President Clinton. He's also spending a lot of time seeking support from his fellow Democrats and trying to connect with the public through the press. Please get off the Mr. Vice President, did you win the election, Right after sir? the election, Mr. Gore kept his distance. He went jogging with his family and let the television see him playing touch football at the residence. The Gores and the Liebermans went to the movies, just two friendly families. And, of course, to church. But in the last few days, it's been more of Al Gore all the time. What is at stake is the integrity of our democracy. Mr. Gore has made five formal televised appearances to argue his case for challenging the Florida results. That is that the state of Florida has certified a vote count that is neither complete nor accurate. He has spent hours on the phone to news organizations, including us. Well, thank you, Tom and uh, Dick. And two days ago, there was a televised telephone call with the Democratic leaders in Congress who had just left Washington and were now on the phone from Florida. Did you win this election? Uh, I, I certainly believe that I did. Today, the Gore campaign offered him as an interview to NBC's Today Show and tonight to all the network newscasts. Mr. Vice President, we can't remember the last time you made yourself so available to the media at your suggestion. And I wonder if I'm fair in trying to say that you were trying to change the perception reflected in many polls that the time is fast approaching for you to accept the certified results in Florida and concede the election. Peter, I'm trying to fight for a principle that I think is very important to our country. I'm trying to win this election, to be sure, but more important than who wins and who loses is the principle that every vote should be counted. You keep saying counting the votes in Florida, sir. Do you not mean more specifically recounting the votes? No, these are thousands and thousands of votes that have never been counted even once. It's a little bit like going to the supermarket through the checkout counter and the, the computer uh, scanner picks up most of the items but inevitably some of them it doesn't pick up and they don't give you that item for free they count it by hand. You have not sir been completely clear or consistent about a date certain on which you will no longer continue the legal challenge. Do you believe that date is December the 12th? I think this is going to be over with by the middle of December. The 12th of December is indeed the middle of December. But why don't you like to, why don't you like to settle on the date? Well, um, you know, under the, uh, uh, under the law, uh, December 18th is the date when the Electoral College meets. And I'm just not going to get into the details. I'm going to leave those to the experts. Do you support in spirit, though your name is not on the suit, the effort to throw out the absentee ballots in Seminole County because the Republicans put an identification number on the application? If the ballots uh, for one party were illegally uh, changed and fixed and the ballots from the other party that, that didn't have that information were rejected and thrown away, that doesn't seem fair to me. Do you think in many ways, sir, you're the victim of circumstance now? I don't feel like a victim. I feel like... Uh, uh, I feel like somebody who is fighting for a principle that's at the heart of our democracy, and I feel like somebody who's going to win on that principle. It is ironic, is it not, though, sir, that after 25 years as a politician, always appealing directly to the people to be elected time and time again, you now must rely on lawyers to get you into the White House. I'm relying on the people, and I'm relying on uh, the, the fairness of our legal system to make sure that the votes of the people are counted. Just one note about Mr. Bush. He's also very careful about how he appears. And when he takes questions, Mr. Bush jogs too, but he doesn't answer questions. 
Just a wave as he goes about business, according to his staff. We tried to talk to him today. He said no. When we come back, whispers of a recession. And later in the broadcast, the illicit trade in a popular drug for children. A closer look at Ritalin abuse.